So we're at it again once more with solenoids. We found from previous videos, if we use Ampere's law, we can find the magnetic field of a solenoid. So let's draw a result of that. We've got with R the magnetic field, and it magnetic field will change at A. Before A, we will have a non-zero constant, and after A, we will have zero. So we can also write this result as that our magnetic field V is mu naught n i as a function of time for r less than a, and that our magnetic field B is zero for r greater than a. Okay, this is awesome. And in a previous video, we found the induced electric field when this current changes inside the solenoid. What we want to find is a point outside the solenoid. And so what we can do is we can have a loop going through this one point. We know our electric field will curl, so we want to choose a Faradian loop, very similar to an Ampereian loop, excuse the irregular circle, of this radius r that moves in a circle. So as we look at this e dot ds, if we choose a circle, the radius doesn't change, and our electric field only depends on the radius, so we can pull it out. So we can say that our closed integral of E dot ds is equal to the electric field parallel to this, so E in the theta or the t direction, times 2 pi r. So we've solved this side. We haven't solved this side. The first step to do for this side is to look at this integral of v dot dA, which also we can call v flux. So we can say that our flux magnetic is our integral of v dot dA. So we need to integrate over this area. A way to integrate over this area is to choose a ring. And if we were to slice this ring and kind of move it over here, We've seen this before a little bit, where our ring would have a thickness of dr, and it would have a length of 2 pi r. So our dA is going to be 2 pi r times dr. But as we're adding this up, we also have to consider rings inside. So we're actually going to have two terms for this flux term. We're going to have from 0 to a, the magnetic field inside, which we found is mu naught n i of t times dA 2 pi r dr plus from A to R, the magnetic field outside, which we found is zero. Why are we doing it this way? Well, just in case we had a more complex function or just in case we have something that's non-zero, we can then plug in that non-zero function. But of course, everyone's itching to do it, so let's do it. An indefinite integral of zero is zero, so that's always nice. This integral of mu naught n i of t 2 pi r dr, only r depends upon right uh, the dr. Everything else is constant in r. But also, we can just notice that this, our dA, the integral of dA is going to be a. It's just going to be the circle. So our flux magnetic is going to be mu naught n i of t times pi r squared from 0 to a, or we say mu naught n i of t pi a squared. Okay, so we have this is our flux, and now we just need to take the derivative of it. And so then we have negative ddt of this flux magnetic. Looking through this, mu naught n pi and a squared all do not change. So we're going to write them first. And then we just have di dt. And don't forget this minus sign. And we know that all this is then equal to e in the theta direction times 2 pi r. Well, looking at this, we don't have as many cancellations as we used to like, as we used to have, but we can cancel the pi on both sides, and then we can divide both sides by 2 r. 
And if we do that, then what we get from this is that e in the theta direction is equal to negative mu naught n a squared over 2r times di dt. So what's important here? What's important is this r is on the bottom, which means that our electric field will drop with distance. And so what we might have is we might have an electric field that goes something like this if we're drawing now the electric field with distance. And what we found from the previous video was that we had r on top, so would look something of this sort. Now, here's what's important, right? Our magnetic field is zero after A, but our electric field isn't. Our electric field drops off and eventually approaches zero, but it doesn't immediately drop to zero. This is very similar to if we had a charged rod or charged sphere, the electric field would drop in a similar manner, not be immediately zero, but right, start approaching asymptotically to zero. So make sure that you do all these calculations and don't just assume it's zero. Thanks.